Yes, yes, welcome to another video. I'm Lewis above Miss John, and this is the review of the Crystal Palace game. Manchester City got the win in the end, and that puts the big pressure now on Manchester United. Can they extend their title fight tomorrow? Probably not, but we'll see, innit? We'll see what happens tomorrow. Innit? City could be crowned champions tomorrow, Ooh. the 2nd of May 2021. I'm absolutely buzzing for it. Um, before we talk about all that, let's, um, let's get set some light targets and stuff. Uh, I think, given the fact that we could potentially be Premier League champions tomorrow, but we have to go big. So let's go yeah. for 1,500 likes, yeah, guys. So buddy. make sure you smash the thumbs up button on the video if you do enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel if you need. We're getting so close to 30,000 subscribers, guys. So help us out. Click that red button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. And guys, I want to tell you about today's sponsor of the video. It is the guys at One Football. You don't know what One Football is? Well, One Football have an app that you can download, right? The link will be in the description. It's also the pinned comment. Download the app. Select your favourite team. I guess most of you will be City fans, so select City as your favourite team. And you get all the City news you could ever want straight to your phone. Uh, you get match reports, news reports, transfer news, transfer rumours. You even get some free football on there from time to time. It doesn't cost you a penny. So it's worth downloading. If you don't like, if you don't like it, get rid of it. But it's definitely worth checking out, guys. We use it and it's actually a sick app. So check it out. Massive thanks to One Football. We've, uh, we've scouted Haaland quite a few times on there. We have indeed, yeah. I, I'm not sure what time you'll be watching this, but DFB Podcast is on tonight on the One Football app, so you can go check that out for free. Yeah, yeah, go check it out. Right, let's get into it. Sergio Aguero got a start today, and he got himself a goal, and what a goal it was as well. Um, beautiful ball played in. I think it was by Mendy. Yeah. Um, and he gets himself into the box, and he hits it with his laces straight into the roof of the net. Beautiful finish, clinical finish, something that we've not had in this team for a very, very long time. Um, but but even not, a, not to put the goal to one side, I thought his all-round play was excellent. I thought he looked sharp, I thought he looked agile. I thought, honestly, he just looked like prime Aguero again. Yeah, he looked match fit instantly. I think you said that in the live stream as well, and I was watching mm. it, and he did. He, he was very fast on the ball. He looked really good. He, like you say, it, looked, it was a flashback. I said before the game, yeah, I wanted a flashback moment from Aguero. I just wanted to see it again, do you know what I mean? Because we're getting very few chances to see Aguero come into the end of his City career. Mm. And uh, I wanted that flashback moment, and obviously the goal was an incredible finish you know what I mean that was. was the flashback moment for me and I was so buzzing to see him score especially because we've only seen him score from the penalty spot since he's been back mm. to get an outfield goal like that. and then the ball in from Mendy was next level yeah. it was, Mendy had a really good game today as well which on a side note but yeah it was a great finish from Aguero something that we've definitely missed from the team and it kind of like it put it in perspective a bit and it kind of showed that we've not had a striker in the fact that we don't really see many goals like that a proper striker's finish like yeah. that something that only really big dog strikers do we don't see that in this team anymore and basically that's pretty much because of playing false nine in situation but i'm surprised he actually scored because the first half he was just dropping deep yeah he was he, yeah. he was pretty much our most creative player on, on the pitch yeah he was dropping deep and pinging balls but i was thinking nah i want him in the box but uh he did really well his work rate was incredible you would not mm. think that this guy has been injured for most of the season yeah, yeah. That, nah, he was absolutely excellent today. Here's the question, though. Should City be letting Sergio Aguero walk out the door for free? That You know what I mean? He's, um, he's shown today, and he's shown previously. Obviously, he didn't get chances when he's previously played. But he's shown that, for me, he looks he looks like he's sharp. Okay, yes, there's a question mark over his injury record. But there is a, you know, should we really be letting this guy, club legend, and, and, and from what I saw today, looks like he's got unfinished business. Should we really be letting him go? I, I don't he, know, guys. I know after, now, after today, bro. It looks like he'd go and bag thirty goals a season anyway. Well, yeah. I mean, the rumours are that he's going to Barcelona, right? I tell you this: if he can stay fit, right, which obviously is a question mark in itself, but if he can stay fit, he'll score 25, 30 goals in La Liga next year. Guarantee you. I guarantee you because he's that that good. And there are rumours that City did offer him a contract, but halved his wage because of the facts of his injuries and potentially buying another striker, so he wouldn't even be our first choice. But guys, let us know in the comment section below what what's the situation with Aguero. Did have City done the right thing here? Should we have let him go? I I don't know, man. I mean, I'm 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 split. I'm split. Uh, right, let's move on to someone who hasn't had too much game time this season, but for me, most of the time when he has played, he, he's impressed me. Um, it's Ferran Torres played today off the right hand side, gets himself a good goal, nice finish. Um, you know, trying to make things happen on the right, taking players on, linking up nice with Cancelo and Fernandinho quite a bit as well. And and I know some people, I can't believe it personally, but some people don't rate this guy. And I have absolutely no reason, I don't get it. I don't get why people don't rate him because 
He looks class. He's only young. He's 20 years old or 21 or something. It's going to take him time. He's moved to a different country at a very young age during a pandemic, got the virus, and people are still not happy with his performance. He's like, guys, you've got to put it into, into context here. Like, listen to what I've just said. All that stuff has happened to this young guy in one season. And for me, his performances have been good. He's very clinical. He's a very good finisher. He's athletic. He's physical. This guy is an A-star baller. Right, and he will go on to do great things at this football club. Mark my words. Like a hundred percent. I've been saying this all season, bro. I've been saying every all season. Like no matter how bad Torres performs and stuff, I always have this like inclined to inclined to back him. But he's never really played bad. Like there's, there's been games that he's played where he might be ineffective and yeah. not really done anything. But then you can say that maybe it's just the way the opposition have set up and our wingers are suffocated and stuff. Like there's been yeah. there's been a lot of games where he has played extremely well. And but then yeah. I, what my point my point is like, the fact that. I've always backed him in the sense that I genuinely think this guy is going to be a world class striker. I genuinely think he's striker looks, or winger. Or winger, yeah. He looks like it. He, he has he, obviously he can play striker. He can play winger. He can yeah, play he across can, yeah. all the Very, free. Yeah. He, he looks he looks mint. I genuinely think he has so much talent. Um, it's scary how much talent I think he has in it, like in my mm. brain. But it's just about giving him time to show it. And I feel like obviously he has had a difficult year, and it showed it in the goal. The guy cried when he scored. It yeah. must have been like a bit of a relief, wasn't like. Do you know what I mean? He must have been so buzzing, and so I have that much passion and emotion in that goal because it has been difficult for him, regardless of, like you said, bro. Taking that's and that's taking Pep's tactics out of the way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. without Pep's tactics included, which he has to learn the whole new system and everything like that. He's had a difficult year, and I was buzzing to see him get that goal, especially after watching his train his video of him in training, finishing that we mentioned in the preview. Mm-hmm. And I just think this guy's got a massive future, and I hope it's at Manchester. Like yeah. I, I hope we can keep on to this guy because he. I think he's going to be sick. Yeah, look, fans just need to be patient with Ferran Torres, yeah. right? It might take a little bit of time, but. Honestly, I've seen more than enough this season to give me great optimism that this guy is going to be world-class. Um, Raheem Sterling, someone who was world-class and has kind of dipped off in terms of form. Uh, he came back against Tottenham and played pretty decent in the first half. Second half, the whole team sort of like a little bit bit, bit, bit weird. Yeah. Um, but today, I thought, again, today he was positive. He's making good runs. He's driving at the defence. He's, uh, he's using his quick feet. There were a couple of occasions where he probably should have shot. There was uh, maybe a few occasions where he, he did have a shot and maybe could have done a little bit better. But, again... I'm very. I thought it was very positive performance. He's driving at the defense, which is what we want to see from Raheem Sterling. When Raheem Sterling's at his worst, is when he gets the ball and doesn't do anything because maybe his confidence is low or he doesn't want to take on a player. I'm not seeing that right now. I'm seeing him getting the ball and driving at the defense, and he won't. He won't take them on every time because that's not going to happen. Sometimes the defender will actually make a tackle. You know yeah. what I mean? Sometimes I think some people believe that when a winger's running at a defender. And they get tackled. It's like, oh, you got tackled. Yeah, but you know what I mean? you, you got to appreciate they're playing against good defenders. So I, I, I was, you know, I thought the performance today from Sterling was positive. Um, and I think we're on the road to recover with Raheem Sterling. Hopefully very soon we'll see him back to his best. But there was a couple of occasions today where he was very, very close to getting a goal. And maybe that's what we need. Maybe we need Raheem Sterling just get that one goal and then boom, he'll be at the races. But yeah, very. I thought very positive. I think he's, he's very optimistic with him. I think he's just lacking that killer finish at the moment. I think, um, to be fair, you could say that about says great as a whole, but I think you, you are right in the sense that it's literally the final product. That's where it's lacking at the moment. He did have chances today um, where he looked like he could have scored, but we're close. We are close mm. to seeing him back. And I think it, you just need to give him time. Like it's, it's not easy to just fall out of form get all this slander drop me on Twitter and that and then just mm. come back like that because it ain't going to happen you can't just magic yourself back into form and then some players obviously take out a team and stuff and it, that hasn't worked for him but then playing him and he's looking confident he took a free kick which yes it did drop me in sky over however to have the confidence to back yourself to take it mm-hmm. I think we are seeing a more confident stone in the last two games that he's played which is more than what he can say for the whole well for most of the season so I, I just hope these are the like the it steps forward. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. steps forward. Don't know how long it's going to take. However, I think hopefully it'll be soon. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, absolutely. Um, right, rotation, 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 rotation. That's the big debate before the game. Uh, we put out a poll on our YouTube channel. If you're subscribed, you'll put, you'll get more likely to see the polls, and you can have a, you can vote in our polls and stuff. The question was before the game: Should we go with a completely different starting eleven for Palace? Um, and the, obviously the answers were no one game at a time so play a strong team or full send a different starting 11 78% of you thought that Pep Guardiola should have done a full rotation which is you know pretty much what he did obviously with the team yeah. and 
it paid off. It paid off because we've rested Mares, Foden, Bernardo, Gundogan, Kevin De Bruyne, Walker, Diaz, <laughs> John Stones, Jesus. Zinchenko. Like we've literally rested everyone, of course. Um, obviously by the centre mids, and we got the win. So the momentum carries on, and now we go into PSG with a lot of these players who played today playing well, which is good because yeah. you know realistically they're probably not going to start the game, but. At least it gives a gives Pep a decision to make, and obviously you've got all them them players rested who played the PSG game, so it puts us in a great great position um, for that PSG uh, PSG game on Tuesday. I think one big thing for me about this rotation was getting Aguero in because if we're in a difficult position, whether it be in the Champions League semi final, if we get through into the final, if we need a goal in any of them games. Mm. You'd be looking at Aguero. However, it. We've not seen Aguero score yet other than that penalty. So we didn't really know in it like whether we can rely on him anymore, if that's gone, if that side of it, do you know what I mean? Is it is it dusted, do you know what I mean? But him getting that goal today, I think, showed all of us that yeah. this guy still has that killer finish. It's still there. Yeah. And you can back Aguero to score in pretty much any position, you know what I mean? Mm. So it's good to know that if Aguero doesn't start the game, if because I, I don't think he will start against PSG. But if we need a goal towards the end of it, you know that you could be, you could bring on Sergio Aguero, and he'll and that, that the, the the rotation has showed that today. And I think yes, these players that I played can't really book themselves a spot in the PSG game because it's difficult because you really want a similar team to what started the first one. Yeah. However, I think you're kind of showing that you can rely on a few people to come off the bench and make an actual difference. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I think it was the right decision. Um, it's paid off in the sense that we got the win and now obviously we can go into PSG in a, in a, in a great frame of Fresh. mind. Right, before we end, let's go through the player ratings for today's game against Crystal Palace. As always, guys, these ratings are decided by not me, by not Jordi Pordy, but indeed by our extra club members. These are the goats at the bottom of the screen. If you want to get involved, have your say, get yourself in the Discord server, loads of extra perks, and have your say on these these uh, player ratings, which is the most important thing. Um, you can become an extra club member as well. The link is in the description. Right, I'm going to switch up, bro, and let you take the defence this week. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, so in defence, got Edison in net, obviously. He gets a 9.5. He didn't really have that much to do today. I think all their shots just went straight at him. Yeah. Um, a bit poor from Crystal Palace in a finishing sense uh, Cancelo got an 8.1 uh, Ake gets a 9.1 Ake back in the team he looked good today he, he looked well. really good Fair today play. well played Ake um, Laporte obviously back in the team gets an 8.9 Mendy back in the team 9.3 Monaco Mendy Monaco Mendy he looked mint today and got yeah, himself an assist he did I thought he was very very good you know what I mean guys I've been a bit of a critic of Mendy I don't know where his future lies but if you can't if you can't give credit to a player when they play well, you've got an agenda. That's just yeah. that's simple as it. You know what I mean? And um, I thought Mendy played really he well was today. Incredible today. Yeah, fair play to him. Um, midfield, um, what we got there? We got Rodri eight point nine, Fernandinho eight point eight. Them two just sort of controlled the play. We dominated possession. I think at half time we had like eighty percent possession. It was pretty pretty mad. Um, yeah. And then the attack. I've got a bone to pick actually with the extra club members on one of these, bro. <laughs> Ooh, so Fran, Fran Torres gets a nine point five. I thought that's fair. He did well. Jesus uh, Sterling, sorry, gets an eight point two. Aguero gets a nine point eight, which is a man and a match from the extra club members. But they've given Gabby Jesus. A 7.8 I think that's low I thought Gabby Jesus had a really good game today I thought he made some brilliant tackles to get us on the uh, get us back on the on the attack I thought he pressed well but he held up the ball well I thought his passing was a lot quicker I thought he should have got a little bit higher than that so yeah I thought I would have given him a, like an 8.4 or something I thought he played decent but uh, okay, I don't make the, I don't give the ratings you don't make the calls don't the ratings. <laughs> Zanko, by the way got an 8.9 and Pep got a 10 out of 10 obviously the extra club members are very happy that he got the um, he got the rest in you know what I mean and we can, we're can we ready to go now for Tuesday which is obviously the biggest game of our season so far boom right okay we'll have to see then within 24 hours Manchester City could be Premier League champions We'll have to wait and see. We're going to do a live watch along, by the way, of the Manchester United versus Liverpool game. So if you want to come and join us, um, we'll be there live tomorrow where we could potentially see Manchester City become champions if uh, I think United got to lose, aren't they? United lose yeah, that United game. Lose. So, um, um, we, can, we can all celebrate together. Yeah. As all yeah. City fans, all in one place, all celebrate together, get the champers out, you know what I mean? Have a party. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So a massive few days coming up on the channel. Obviously, we've got that tomorrow. We've got the PSG game. Um, we've got the tier three live stream of the Chelsea Real Madrid 
game on Wednesday. So absolutely massive stuff coming up. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of it. Go check out the One Football app. The link is in the description. It's also the pinned comment. Go leave a like on the video before you go. And we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>